welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on sulfur and its compounds. We are going to be looking at the acid that we prepared in the contact process. So these are some of the properties of concentrated sulfuric six acid. So we will start with the concentrate, concentrated one and then in the next video we are going to discuss on the dilute one. So concentrated sulfuric acid has a few physical properties. It's usually a colorless, odorless, oily liquid, and it's very dense with a density of 1.84 grams per centimeter cubed. It's very soluble in water, and it gives us a heat when, in, when solution, a solution is formed. It's hygroscopic in nature, so it absorbs atmospheric pressure, uh, moisture to become wet. You notice this is one of the reasons why it is used uh, later on as a drying agent because of this nature. So to show the hygroscopic nature of sulfuric acid, we take a small beaker, we add uh, the concentrated sulfuric acid, and then we left it for a few days. Before we left it, we weighed it. And then after a few days, the level of the acid uh, increases. And also when you weigh the final uh, solution, you notice that the mass increases. So the increase in weight and size is due to water absorbed from the air by the concentrated sulfuric six acid. This is explains why sulfuric six acid is used as a drying agent. So it absorbs moisture from gases, and so it dries those gases in return. Also, it acts as a dehydrating agent. And one of the ways we can test for this is the reaction of uh, the concentrated sulfuric six acid with an hydrated copper two sulfate. So hydrated copper two sulfate crystals are actually blue in color. And if you put them in that test tube and then you add concentrated sulfuric acid, you'll notice that the blue copper two sulfate uh, crystals will turn white and they're changing from hydrated copper two sulfate to anhydrous copper two sulfate. So that tells you that the water element or the water of crystallization has been absorbed by the acid. So this is the equation. As you can see in the equation, we are starting with five molecules of water. We end up having copper sulfate crystals that have doesn't have any water of crystallization. So concentrated sulfuric six acid has a very strong affinity for water and removes the water of crystallization from crystals, hence dehydrating them. Another reaction is with sugar. So sugar is a compound of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen from the formula. So when a tablespoon of sugar is put in an evaporating dish uh, from a beaker and as an adequate amount of concentrated sulfuric acid is added, what it does, the sugar will turn from from yellow and then it's going to form a black mass as you can see from the from the image so this black mass or charred black mass is carbon so it's the carbon that is rising to fill the beaker so steam is also given off and the dish becomes very hot since the reaction is exothermic so you can see from the reaction basically uh, sulfuric acid takes the water element, the hydrogen and oxygen in the um, sugar to form carbon, which is a black mass, and then in turn water is produced. So the acid removes the sugar elements of water, as I've said, and it leaves behind the carbon. Another reaction is the uh, reaction of the acid with oxalic acid. We have used this before in form two in when we were preparing carbon two oxide. So we reacted ethandioic acid with concentrated sulfuric acid to form carbon two oxide and carbon four oxide. And we said that the carbon two oxide can be collected when the carbon four oxide is bubbled in sodium hydroxide or lime water. It is absorbed and we're left with carbon two oxide. We want to check out how carbon two oxide is produced form two we can go back and check that video so the ethandioic acid uh, 
react with the acetated sulfuric six acid to form both carbon two oxide and carbon four oxide. So the acid gives severe burns um, and it removes water elements also from the skin and tissue. That's the reason why if you spill the acid on the skin, you wash, wash it a lot with a lot of water or with a solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So holes appear when the acid spills on clothes for the same reason. It also reacts with alcohol. It dehydrates alcohol to form alkenes. So this is also repeated in organic two, organic one that we discussed in form three when we were preparing alkenes. So ethanol undergoes dehydration from a dehydrating agent that is concentrated sulfuric acid to form a thin and water is given off. So it also reacts with methanoic acid. This is also in form two in the preparation of carbon monoxide. So it dehydrates the methanoic acid to form carbon two oxide and water is given off. So sulfuric acid also acts as an oxidizing agent, in which case it is reduced to sulfur four oxide in water. So those ways are their reactions with metals for example, when a concentrated sulfuric acid reacts with copper, it forms copper sulfate, sulfur oxide, and water. So, um, we know that normally when metals react with acid, they form salt and hydrogen gas. But you can see because of how oxidizing it is, instead of forming the hydrogen gas, it forms water and sulfur oxide. Zinc also reacts with a uh, concentrated sulfuric acid when it is hot it forms zinc sulfate plus sulfur four oxide and water when it is cold it forms zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas so for lead it also reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid to form lead sulfate plus sulfur four oxide and water remember this reaction starts and stops and you see why so dilute sulfuric acid doesn't have any action on copper because it's high in the reactivity series. So copper cannot displace hydrogen because hydrogen is high in the reactivity series. But in the concentrated one, it's possible because of the high oxidizing property of concentrated sulfuric acid. So if the acid reacts with lead, as we saw in the equation above, it's usually say a small amount of sulfur four oxide is given off because of formation of an insoluble salt. And the insoluble salt in this case that is formed is lead to sulfate, which stops the reaction from occurring. So also concentrated sulfuric acid reacts with nonmetals, so it oxidizes them to, uh, to their corresponding oxides. So, for example, if you react carbon with concentrated sulfuric acid, we're going to form carbon four oxide, sulfur four oxide, and water. Remember, carbon four oxide can be tested using lime water, which is calcium hydroxide. Uh, sulfur four oxide can be tested with so many things. It can you can use the litmus paper, you can use uh, the potassium permanganate seven, the dichromate. Uh, the water is just part of it. And then also sulfur reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid to form sulfur four oxide in water. So next thing we are going to look at volatility of concentrated sulfuric acid. So volatility is changing of this uh, liquid into gaseous state and it's dependent, actually dependent on the mass. So if you were to look at the volatility of sulfuric acid, it's usually less volatile. So if it's less volatile, it means the molecular mass is high. So it has a very high boiling point. So for it to turn into a gas, it requires a very large amount of heat in comparison to other gases. So you can see hydrochloric acid is the most volatile followed by nitric acid and sulfuric acid. This tells you that it changes into a gas very quickly. And you notice that especially with hydrochloric acid, when you leave it, when you pour it in a solution, you're going to see a lot of fumes. 
So because of this property, uh, because of the fact that sulfuric acid is less volatile, it means it can displace other volatile acids like hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. So if you were to react metal like uh, nitrates, metal nitrates, you see the nitrate ions which are in the nitric acid, sulfuric acid would displace the, the nitrate ions to form uh, nitric acid. So you remember that this is one of the processes of formation of nitric acid that we discussed in nitrogen and its compounds. It can also react with potassium chloride to form hydrochloric acid, which is a process of formation of hydrochloric acid in the lab. So you can see, just because of its volatility, how it's able to displace the nitrates and the chloride ions in, in, their, in their metals, so to form their acids in return. So this is the reactions of concentrated sulfuric acid. It comes to an end. So in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at some properties of dilute sulfuric acid, and then we will close off. So see you in the next lesson as we dive deep into dilute um, sulfuric acid.